let's take a look at some of the general and usability improvements that have come with 2022 Release Wave 1. Let's start looking at the enhancements to the peak feature. And we can do this from any sort of list page. And today I'm going to be using the VAT entries as an example. This is just a regular list page. And you'll notice that some fields for the selected line have these dotted underlines. These are where we can use the peak feature. In the past, for certain fields, we could click on these and go straight to a record it's related to in question. This has now also been improved for additional fields as well. Where if we take a look at things like the VAT business posting group and product posting group, these are underlined and would have shown the definition in the past, but also now gives us the ability to open a full list, letting us see all the options that are available for that particular field. This gives us easier transparency and access to particular data. There's also been improvements to the lookups on dynamic fields. And to demonstrate this, I'm going to do this from a sales order. If we already had an item selected, for example, I'll go for an Athens desk here, and we'll use another example with a GL account. In the past, we could overtype over these descriptions to set a custom one for this particular sales document. This is still consistent. However, now when I overtype a particular description, it will actually start suggesting items as well. Meaning if there was something more correct for me to select, the system may prompt that for me. I can then select one of these if there's something that I actually should have used instead, and it will replace the information. This can be particularly useful for GL accounts when you have those on your lines, as it may suggest some more relevant accounts in question when you're overtyping. Another small but useful change is how fast tabs react when you open them. Let's use the invoice details section down here, for example. If I close this and then reopen it, you'll notice that when I click the fast tab, the page automatically scrolled for me. Because of all the fields within the fast tab, it would have opened past the end of the page. Business Central now scrolls automatically so we can see its entirety without us having to scroll manually. With this update, we can now easily share files from any attachments tab or the reports inbox via OneDrive. Let's take a look at the reports inbox as an example. If we scroll down, we'll see a list of our scheduled reports that we received here. And from the three dots, we can select share. If this is your first time doing it, you have to accept some permissions. Once it's ready, you can share with anyone with the link, people in your organization, people with existing access, or specific people, as well as all the usual settings you'd expect with OneDrive. Within your OneDrive itself, this will have generated a business central folder. In here will be any companies you shared a file from, and then the documents in question. As mentioned, you could also do this from the attachments section of the fact box, opening up the documents link, and with the three dots thanks to the file you want to share via OneDrive, again, selecting share. And that's how you can easily share a file via OneDrive within Business Central. There's also been an update to how the help functionality behaves and the documentation sections of the search. If we open the help with the question mark in the upper right hand corner, we now get a help pane on the right hand side. This will give us a suggestion based on the page we're on, as well as gives the option to take a tour, if we'd like to. It'll take us directly to the most relevant Microsoft documentation if it's available, as well as any related resources from the Microsoft Docs. It'll also have a list for other resources where you can find the usual help and support, which will open up in the middle, with the options we're used to, such as viewing the last known error, and inspecting pages and data, as well as an option for keyboard shortcuts and a link to the community. With this being more suggestion based, we can use a search from across the top here to search for whatever help we need. We will get results like so, and click show more to find more documentation. Using the search or tell me from across the top, in the past, we could search for help in documentation, and it's still the same here. Except now, in the documentation section, you'll only have one option to search for whatever you're searching for, in this case, sales quotes. 
which will automatically open and search for whatever it is you're looking for within the help pane on the right hand side. Coming back to the take a tour option that we have available within the help pane, it's worth mentioning that some of these tours have been improved with extra rich text, as well as new additional tours on some pages, such as the role explorer for example. These new additions should help a new user to the system get up and running and understanding how it works a bit more effectively. A new feature within 2022 release wave 1 is the ability to check documents and journals while we work. A new section to the fact box will be added where we can see any issues with the current document or journal we're working on. In this example of a fully received but not yet invoice purchase order, we can see an issue already. We need to enter the document number of the document, so the vendor invoice number in this case. In fact, if we want to see more of this issue or the number of issues we may have in a document, we can click into the queue at the top of the fact box and see a full list. So we can see here the remainder of the description which was cut off in this case. So once we enter in the vendor invoice number, and we click refresh under the check documents, we can see no issues are currently found. And if there were any more remaining issues with the documents that could prevent us from continuing, we could see them from here ahead of posting. This allows you to see any upcoming errors ahead of actually posting, helping improve the user experience and productivity. Here's another example from a payment journal. Here we can see we're checking two lines, both of my lines have an issue, and we have three issues total, which I can click on to see the full list. In this case, because I've got two lines, I have two posting data not within your range of allowed posting right now. And I can see the fact that I'm failing some validation because the amount must be positive in the general journal template lines. Meaning I don't have to actually post this journal, so now I've got a couple of issues I need to go fix. My amount must not be negative in this case. which will fix one of my issues, clicking into another line to update. We still then have our posting date issue to address, otherwise when attempting to process this payment, we'll receive an error since the current date sits outside our allowed posting date range. To use this functionality, it must first be turned on, and we can do this in the general ledger setup. Just ensuring that enable data check towards the bottom here is turned on. If you can't see this, make sure to select show more from the upper right hand corner of the general fast tab of the general ledger setup. This can also be personalized as required to remove if need be or move further down on the fact box if that's your preference. Another function available to us is the ability to just see our issue lines from within a document. We can do this by going to more options, issues, and show lines with issues here. Within my lines of many items, I only had one issue line in question, or I hadn't set the dimensions in this case. We can always return back to the original view by clicking issues and show all lines. Making it easier to fix your issues within your larger purchase and sales documents. And those are some of the updates and changes within Microsoft Dynamics 365 Business Central Release Wave 1 2022.